With the recent reveal of the new Nintendo Switch console, it's now known that Nintendo's next project is centred on offering entertainment on the go and at home all in the same package. It's certainly an interesting concept and we at Game Revolution are looking forward to hearing more in January 2017. To offer them a helping hand in righting the wrongs of the past and making the Switch the best it can be, we've compiled our top 5 reasons why the Wii U failed. Nintendo, here's what not to do. It's possible that releasing a year ahead of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One could have given Nintendo an early lead into the next generation console race, but with lackluster specs, confused marketing and no killer apps, the Wii U's head start didn't lead to a big advantage. Instead, it left the console behind in what felt like an already old generation. The Nintendo Switch is set to launch in March 2017, a curious date in that it misses the Christmas rush, so I do hope Nintendo knows what it's doing. Launching the Wii U with a price tag of $300 was a pretty big risk, and it was made even more bold or stupid, perhaps, by the lack of any must-have software. For a console that was designed first and foremost to deliver great gaming experiences, there sure was a lack of decent titles to play. Happily, and thanks to a lot of delays, the Nintendo Switch shouldn't make the same mistake. Here's hoping The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is ready for launch, and we did see Splatoon and Mario Kart 8 in the reveal trailer, along with NBA 2K and even Skyrim. Though Nintendo had the ability to pump out some great first-party titles for the Wii U, a severe lack of third-party support meant that the console just couldn't compete with the likes of PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. The Wii U's substantially weaker specs presented too big of a challenge for most publishers, and the extra work needed to optimise ports for the Wii U just wasn't worth it. With the Switch, Nintendo has already given a long list of publishers who are planning to support the console. Whether these plans are ever realised is another story, but for now, it is good news. With iPads and other tablets flying off store shelves and becoming the new must-have gadgets, back then anyway, we can see why Nintendo felt that a big touchscreen pad was a good idea. After all, the little touchscreens found on the DS and 3DS had worked out great, so maybe bigger could be even better. But no, that wasn't the case. Players were already in love with the Wii Motes, which Nintendo seemed to have forgotten about when developing the Wii U. Instead of improving on what was already successful, the company invested in costly tech that ultimately wasn't worth the risk. The Nintendo Switch can be controlled in a variety of weird and wonderful ways, along with a traditional pad that the more hardcore gamers should feel content with. The original Wii had a silly name, but it got away with it. The Wii U, on the other hand, had no such luck. Even I, as game-obsessed as I am, initially thought that the Wii U was just a giant touchscreen pad that you could use with the standard Wii. And since I wasn't really interested in the monstrosity of a controller, I simply ignored any news regarding it, unaware for months that the Wii U was in fact Nintendo's next-gen console. I wonder how many people out there still don't know the truth. Thankfully, with the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo are, well, switching the name up. And so those are our top 5 reasons why the Wii U failed. Agree with our points, disagree, let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and share, and be sure to subscribe to be notified of new content. This has been me, Mac, for Game Revolution. Goodbye.